In today's session, we're going to be having a look at the blending tools that you have available to you inside the Time Warper. Now here we have a shot that we'd like to Time Warp. Let's have a look at the original so we can see exactly what we're facing. You can see this is a very, very quick shot of a cat turning its head. Now I'd like to go ahead and Time Warp this shot. To apply a Time Warp, simply select the shot inside the timeline and choose the TW Soft Effect on the left hand side of the interface. This applies a Time Warp to the clip and then in the middle of the interface we can go ahead and adjust the various settings. Now you've got two methods in which you can actually work with a Time Warp which is kind of interesting. The first thing is we can tell Smoke to keep the clip length exactly the same and simply dial in a value. So for example by slowing the clip down to 50% when I play this clip back it lasts exactly the same amount of time but it's been slowed down. Now what if I'd like to actually have the clip lengthen itself as the slow-mo happens. So for example in the original shot before I applied the time warp I've got a starting frame and effectively I have got an end frame. I'd like to keep those frames exact place as they are. So in fact I want the clip to get longer as opposed to staying the same length. The one thing you can do is when applying time warps you have got a locking option that appears on the interface. It's currently set to off but if I choose to lock both what it means is it'll lock the head frame as well as the tail frame on the clip. So if I was to dial in let's say for example 25% time warp you can see that it actually lengthens the clip to ensure that the first frame and the last frame of the time warped clip match exactly how it did when it was running at its original speed. Now if we were to take this clip and simply play this back you can see that we've now created a time warp. The one thing to point out is obviously it's strobing because the way time warps work naturally is they literally play one frame, they freeze the frame for a little bit and then play the second and so on and so forth. It almost causes a strobing type of effect. Now in terms of actually working with blending on a clip you have got three options available to you in Smoke. The blending options can be found here in the middle of the interface. The first option is called Mix. Now Mix basically allows you to take the current frame where you're looking at. So let's say we stop in the middle of the clip and we see this frame and if I set the Mix value to about 5 you can see that it starts to blend the frames together. Now what this value is actually doing is we're looking at the current frame and it's taking 5 frames from the future as well as 5 frames from the past and blending them all together in one position. So in fact what you're seeing here on the screen is a result of approximately 11 frames blended together. This is the first type of technique where frame blending occurs. If we process this it doesn't take very much time at all and if we play this back you can see we get a much better looking slow motion by blending frames on top of each other. So this is the first method that you have available to you which is the mixing function. Simply one slider, very quick and easy mixing frames together. The second option you have available to you is the trail option. Now the trail option is identical to what Mix does, it just gives you much more control as to how frames from the past and how frames from the future are blending together. So the pre-slider here is past frames, post is future frames. Now the wait option for both pre and post is how much influence these frames from the past and the future have on the current frame we're looking at. So for example, let's say I set pre-frames to 5, so it's 5 frames from the past blending on the current frame and then post, let's say 2 frames from the future blending on the current frame as well. So you can see I'm altering exactly how many frames are going to be blended as part of the blend. What we can also do is maybe set the weight of the pre-frame, so all frames from the past will only have a impact of about 50 rather than 100. So we're kind of staggering the way the blending is happening, how much frames have influence at the current point in time and ultimately what this does is it allows you to really refine the way frames are blended and mixed together. So if I go back to the very beginning and I press play one more time you can see we actually get a much better type of blend than we did with the original mix value. So you can play with these adjustments and change them as many times as you like just to refine the way your frame blending is taking place. Now the third option you have here is motion estimation. Now motion estimation doesn't have any sliders because motion estimation is simply a mathematical algorithm that has been designed to allow frames to actually blend themselves together. So instead of just repeating frames or dissolving frames on top of each other what motion estimation does is motion estimation will look at two frames and if they've been pushed apart because of a slow motion if any frames need to go in between the two frames that have been slow mode 
the system will use the algorithm to actually build brand new frames. So it actually recreates frames for you. So if I was just to leave it on the default setting and I press process, this is a much more processor intensive operation, but ultimately we're actually building brand new frames as part of the slow motion effect we're creating. So if I slowed the clip down to 25%, you can imagine that it's actually creating quite a few more frames in between the original ones that existed. If we press play, you can see we now have got an absolutely gorgeous slow motion effect. The one thing to remember about motion estimation is that it's not perfect for every single shot. Depending on the movement of the pixels, how quickly they move, whether someone's tumbling or whether someone's just moving across the screen, the motion estimation algorithm does need to acquire its detail from somewhere. So in certain cases, it might not work and in other cases it will work. So you just have to try it and see if it works for you. The other setting that you have next to the motion estimation option is the resolution setting. The resolution setting by default is set to a quarter res. Now this doesn't relate to having a quarter of your image data processed, it actually refers to the algorithm itself. How processing intensive and how accurate is the motion estimation algorithm going to be when it's creating these new frames and building up your part of your time warp. The other option here for example is if I was to switch down to a sixteenth of a resolution, this means that the algorithm is more tolerant to much heavier pixel movement. But once again, because we are making the algorithm more tolerant, it could sometimes be liable to have more artifacting. If we switch to full res, what this means is that the algorithm will be very, very strict and analyze pixel for pixel movement. So when it comes to the motion estimation being processed, it is more processor intensive, but it does give the best quality results. So this is one particular example of how you could actually use blending with motion estimation or blend or mix. Let's go ahead and collapse the timeline. Now if I move over to the second option I have here, here I've already got a clip that's been time warped at 25% and you can see I've set it to motion estimation and full res. The reason why we're doing it again is I want you to pay particular attention to the fan here on the bottom right of the screen. When I play this back, you can see that we're getting some artifacting happening. And this is because the motion estimation algorithm is having a slight difficulty understanding how those pixels are moving and how to morph them appropriately. The one thing to mention is for the remaining part of the picture, so the model and her hair and everything, looks absolutely perfect. So we don't want to lose any of that detail. The way that we can actually address this issue is by using the layers in the timeline as well as the other blending types within the time warp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom of the timeline here and press the layer plus button. And what we'll do is holding down the button on the pen, if I now click and drag it makes a copy and I'm simply going to put a new copy of that time warp on top of itself. So at this point in time I've now got a duplicate on layer 1 and layer 2. Now with the option selected on layer 2 I'm going to change the motion estimation back down to mix. Now let's go back to the slider and set it to a value of 10. So 10 frames from the past and 10 frames from the future blending on the current frame. If we were to go ahead and process this, you can see it's now processed this for me and if I now play back the second layer, you can see we're now getting a nice blending on that particular layer but obviously it messes up the rest of the hair here in the model. So ultimately what we really need to do is we need to take the best from both layers. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to select the second layer here in the timeline and I'm going to apply a wipe soft effect. You'll notice that I've done a time warp to this clip as well as a wipe and we can combine these soft effects together to get a desired result. Now in this case with the wipe soft effect applied, if I click the E button to enter into the wipes advanced editor, you can see it's already applying a default wipe between layer 1 and layer 2. All I'm going to do here is come down to the bottom right of the screen, we'll say take all the nodes and let's simply just delete them. So this means I've completely refreshed out the wipe tool. Now the wipe is in fact a garbage mask, so this is a really quick way of just being able to cut things out. So to apply the wipe or garbage mask onto the scene, over here to the right of the play controls I click add geometry and I'm simply going to go ahead and just isolate the portion of the picture where I want to blend together. So you can see as I move it backwards and forwards, it's actually blending layer A with layer B and we can adjust the offset to give it a bit of softness between the two layers. What this is in fact producing is if you press the F3 button on the keyboard, you can see it's producing an alpha channel. So this is effectively cutting out the image. 
Now, all of this will probably need to be animated over time to match the movement of the fan. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and skip over a little bit forward in time. And this example is exactly the same thing. But if I now go into the wipe editor, you can see that we have a garbage mask that has now been keyframed. So if we were to look at the final result that we have, you can see that we've taken the best of motion estimation and the best of the other blending and created a result which we could then use in the context of the timeline. I hope this has given you a better understanding of the blending modes available to you with Inside of Smoke, as well as how they can be applied in the timeline and how mixing them together can give you a much more cohesive result in the context of your program.